In this tutorial, I provide a demonstration of the advanced tools and features of this web map application, the filter, select, and near me tools located in the top right of the map window. You can access information about this web map at any time by clicking on the information icon next to the measure tool. When clicked, it opens a window that displays information about the purpose of the web map and basic instructions on how to use it, as well as links to learn more about the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative and the Coastal Wetland Monitoring Program. The information window lists and describes each of the main tools included in the web map and also provides links to access tutorial videos, including this one and another that provides an overview of how to use the more basic tools to navigate within the map, access map layer settings, and change the type of background map displayed. When you open the web map for the first time, by default, it displays a map of the Great Lakes Basin, including a map legend that explains what the feature symbols on the map represent. The map scale bar and map coordinates are located in the bottom left of the map window, and north is always at the top of the map. The blue dots displayed on the map represent approximate locations of one or multiple coastal wetland projects funded by the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. The gray dots represent specific locations of wetlands monitored under the Coastal Wetland Monitoring Program, and the lighter blue-colored area represents the five main watersheds that make up the Great Lakes Basin. The gray-colored area with dashed lines represents the 116th Congressional Districts for those states that border a Great Lake. This web map provides a variety of tools, including the basic map navigation tools and the find address or place search window located in the top left of the map window. In addition to these, we can select from three advanced tools that let you filter, select, and search by location for information contained in one or more of the map layers listed under the layer list tool. Let's start with the filter tool located in the top right of the web map. Clicking on the filter tool results in a drop down window displaying three filters, each preset to search for information respective to each of the three map layers. GRI Coastal Wetland Project Sites, the Coastal Wetland Monitoring Sites, and the 116th Congressional Districts. Let's say that you're interested in searching for information about a GRI-funded coastal wetland project that you learned is located in an area in New York called Braddock Bay. With that knowledge, you type Braddock Bay into the search box of the first filter and click on the gray button to activate the filter. The map automatically zooms in to a location on the map resembling a large bay. When reviewing the map legend, you learn that this location includes multiple GLRI coastal wetland projects, as well as riverine and barrier protected coastal wetlands monitored by the Coastal Wetland Monitoring Program. You may find it necessary to use your mouse pointer and scroll wheel to zoom in or out and adjust the map view to help you understand where the location is within the Great Lakes Basin, or in this case, within Lake Ontario. Once oriented, manually zoom in or out and adjust the map to best view your filter results. In this example, Braddock Bay, New York. In this view, we can see that Braddock Bay is fed by two joining streams or rivers, and that the map legend confirms flow through riverine coastal wetlands, as symbolized by the green colored areas. The blue colored areas represent adjacent barrier protected coastal wetlands. To see what this area looks like from a satellite or aerial view, click on the base map gallery tool in the top left of the map window and change the base map setting to one of the aerial view options. In aerial view, you can see that the Braddock Bay is located along Lake Ontario's southern coastline and is adjacent to a patchwork of farmland, wooded and urban areas, and roads. The filter tool's results are displayed on the map as blue dots, one larger dot representing three projects, and a small dot representing only a single project. You can click on either dot to open a pop-up window to view details about restoration efforts taking place in that location. The remaining two filters listed under the filter tool operate in a similar manner. The filter tool also lets you create your own custom filter. To do this, click on the Create a Custom Filter symbol at the bottom right of the window. Once clicked, a new window opens to display a box with a drop-down arrow that, when clicked, presents a list of the map layers you can select from to search for information based on specific search criteria of your choosing. I won't demonstrate this tool any further here. However, I encourage you to explore it on your own. To undo your filters, click on the green button to turn off the filter and restore all layer features for map viewing and click the default extent tool or simply refresh your browser window to reset the window to default settings. Let's move on to the select tool. When clicked, it opens a window displaying a green box that you can click on or off to toggle between using the select tool and your basic navigation tools. When activated, the select tool lets you choose among several methods to select features from a list of layers visible on the map. Any of the map layers listed under the select tool and in bold text can have their features selected. Just click on the box next to any of the listed layers to toggle on or off whether their features can be selected. Just know that zooming in or out will affect what layers are displayed and whether their features can be selected. And for a map layer's features to be selectable, the box next to that layer in the layer list tool must also be checked. 
To demonstrate, let's say that you live in or near Red Cliff Reservation in northern Wisconsin, and you want to create and download a list of all GLRI-funded projects in your area that involve coastal wetland restoration, enhancement, or protection efforts. You begin by typing the place name, Red Cliff Reservation, into the Find Address or Place tool, and select the option that best matches it. The map automatically zooms in closer to your selected location. Once there, and after adjusting the map view to better center the map on your selected location, you first open the Layer List tool and check the box next to the GLRI Coastal and Non-Coastal Project Sites layer, and uncheck the Coastal Projects Map layer, which represents only a subset of all GLRI projects. Now check the box next to the GLRI Coastal and Non-Coastal Project Sites layer under the Select tool so its features can be selected. Finally, using the Select by Rectangle method, draw a rectangle on the map to select all selectable features within your area of interest. You can redo your selection at any time, simply by drawing a new box around your area of interest. Your select results are visible as highlighted features in the map view, and the total count of selected features for each selectable layer is also shown to the right of the layer under the Select tool. Click on any of the map layers to display the list of the projects or features selected from that layer. Click on each selection to see its location on the map and to open a pop-up window displaying more information about that project. To download your select results, click on the three-dot symbol to the right of the map layer under the Select tool, then click on the Export Selected to CSV option. A CSV file will automatically be downloaded to your computer. When finished with the Select tool, just click on the box or button labeled Clear to unselect all map layer features and click on the default extent tool or refresh your browser window to return the map to its default settings. The Near Me tool is the final tool that I want to demonstrate here. The purpose of this tool is to search for, discover, and explore coastal wetlands and GLRI projects located within a short distance of a known or a set location, and if desired, to create and print a map that includes turn-by-turn -turn directions. For example, you might live in or near the city of Green Bay, Wisconsin, and want to know what coastal wetlands are nearby and also to learn about what GLRI restoration, enhancement, and protection efforts are taking place near your city. To do this, first adjust the map so your general location is somewhere within the map view. Next, type in Green Bay, Wisconsin into the tool's Find Location search window. Select the best option listed, and the map will automatically zoom to that location. The tool simultaneously identifies all GLRI coastal and non-coastal projects and coastal wetlands located within a five-mile radius of your selected location. You can adjust the search radius by clicking on and dragging the tool's slide bar left or right to decrease or increase your search radius from zero to 15 miles, respectively. You can also determine a search from location by clicking on the set location option and use your mouse pointer and main button to click on a location on the map. For example, perhaps you live just north of Green Bay. So first you click on the set location option, then position your mouse pointer and click on the location on the map. The map will then automatically zoom to that location and create a list of GLRI projects and coastal wetlands that occur within a distance of your choosing by adjusting the slider. For example, 10 miles from your set location. The Near Me tool displays results of GLRI coastal and non-coastal project sites and coastal wetlands monitored by the Coastal Wetland Monitoring Program. Click on each of the layers to view a list of the sites sorted by nearest distance from your set location. Then click on any record to view more information about that site or location. In this example, the first site listed represents a GLRI coastal wetland project titled Northern Pike and Waterfall Habitat Enhancement in Sensiba Marsh, Wisconsin. Remember, if desired, simply click on the base map gallery tool to change the map background to one of the aerial view options. After reviewing the map and information contained in the project description, just click on the directions tab to generate a route map with directions to the project or wetland site that you can then print or save as a PDF file to your computer. In this tutorial, I've provided an overview of the advanced search tools used to navigate and explore the map layers represented by this web map application, including the Great Lakes Coastal Wetlands and projects funded by the Great Lakes Restoration Initiative. Remember that at any time, just click on the information icon at the top right of the web map to access helpful information and to access a video that describes the basic navigation tools not covered here. Thank you.